On today's episode of Watch Chair we are back in the shop with my 2003 BMW X5 that I'm selling for $1. If we ever find the winner, that is. What is going on guys? I'm Watch Chair and like I said, here in the shop, lots of progress has been made. Check that out. All the conduit is sorted by size and if it's bent or not, all the stuff that we're reusing. We've reused tons and tons of conduit. We're gonna reuse tons and tons of wire, saving a lot, a ton of money, putting all the lights in the other side. Still working on the lights on the other side, but in the last X5 video, I couldn't get the cooling fan off. And everybody said, this is what you need. This is the Lyle Air Hammer Cooling Fan Removal Kit. So, we've got the air hammer attachment section here. This goes in your air hammer, so I grabbed my air hammer from the house. We brought over an air compressor just to make this video, and now we should be ready to remove this thing. So what we need to find here is a 32 millimeter, and that, <laughs> you can see a three. There you go, 32 millimeter. That should be the wrench we need for the fan on this thing, and uh, hopefully this works out just the way I expect it to. We'll put that thing on there, give it a little and uh, fan off. <laughs> okay, setting up our air hammer here. Get the spring back. Everyone's gonna be like, you gotta unhook the air hose first. No, you don't. Come on. I worked in aircraft for years. Never unhooked the air hose for anything. All right, here we go. Let's see if this gets this off of here the way we all think it should. Nope. Not even budging. I know that's the right direction for this thing. Well, that did not work at all. And we're counter holding the water pump with the water pump tool here. Uh, the air compressor was at a 90 PSI. So I just went, took it apart and adjusted it all the way up to 120. Hopefully 120 gives us some power out of this air hammer. Air hammer might be too weak. This is a cheap air hammer. We'll see. We will see what we will see. So let's get this thing all set up here. Get our counter holding tool in here. Once that's done. And we're close. I really need a huge screwdriver to push that into place. This will work. We'll lock this thing on. There's that. Let's see if this thing works this time. Your only hope, Obi Wan air hammer. <laughs> it seemed like it worked. I don't know. The air hammer hit hard, but I don't think it came off. Well, we thought the air hammer was gonna make things easy, but it is not. It's actually just shown us how much of an issue it's gonna be to get this off. So we've got a five millimeter Allen wrench here and we're gonna pull a fan blade. There's three bolts on the fan blade and that might get us, might buy us a little bit of access. So I've got uh, one bolt out, second one's coming out and we'll get this fan off and keep right on going. Here we go. Fan blade is out and actually it looks like it's in pretty good shape too. Ah, this is the original. With the BMW badge on it there. Good old BMW fan. Well, we are going with a new one, which will uh, probably solve any little vibrations caused by all this dirt. I doubt there's much of a vibration. But now, back to getting this fan clutch off here. This fan clutch is just fighting and fighting. Hopefully, we've got access now. This is the old done asking. Unfortunately, I don't have any oxygen, so well, this is just like straight acetylene. I don't want to be breathing. It makes a nice fire, though. We have succeeded. Feast your eyes upon the tools of destruction that we use to pull this off. Uh, huge shout out to Randy. He dropped this off like right when I got the warehouse. He was like, I heard you needed a torch. It worked today, man. We fired this bad boy up. We got that thing as close as we could to red hot, and we couldn't even get it like red hot, but we got it hot and uh, it's not coming off yet. And then with Scott's help on the holding side and I had all my weight on the air hammer and we ran that thing flat out, eventually it finally popped. So let's see, we don't actually have a 32 wrench so we gotta use the air hammer the whole time. Oh uh, yeah, it's coming off, there it goes. So that really loosened it up. Fan clutch, give up. It's probably still hot so I don't wanna touch it. Oh, it's hot, I touched it. All right, we're gonna use the air hammer to loosen it every single little bit. Here we go. Because the air hammer is a proper wrench for this job. We're gonna have to put it on like that YouTube video where the guy just 
holds the fan out here, you know, with the engine running, yep. and then just do that maneuver. And <laughs> I probably won't actually do that, don't worry. Okay, now we made good progress. We got a couple turns on. Here it comes. Finally, the most work I've ever done to get a fan clutch off. It just had a nice little rust seal on there and I think we got it broken loose with the heat. Probably factory. It's also pretty wet. I bet it's been blowing the oil out of it for a while. There's a little bit of slop in this clutch. So, fan clutch off. It's very, very hot. I gotta put it down. Now we're ready to get the belt off, get the water pump pulley off, and uh, get to changing out the water pump. First things first, there's a cover down here on the tensioner. And what we have to do is get that cover off, which should just be a quick little pry. Kind of like that, but I wasn't planning on dropping it. Now there's an Allen head or a bolt down in there and uh, that'll loosen up our tensioner and we can get this belt off. Before we pull the belt off, I want to get this pulley off the water pump. So hopefully these four tins just come right off. Uh, oh wow, that's a little more loose than I expected. Huh, interesting. Okay, well we got those off in three seconds and at least they're loose. So now we just push down on this Allen wrench Pop this belt off here. That is our accessory belt. Work this in and out of there. Almost got, oh, leave it behind the AC compressor. I forgot that it doesn't actually come off unless you pull the front belt. And we do not need to pull that belt at all. So we'll just kind of put the belt over there. Now we are ready to get the uh, pulley off the water pump, which is incredibly loose. So that should just unscrew in a couple of seconds. Once you have these four bolts out, the water pump pulley comes straight off and you should have access to the water pump itself. But I say that until it's stuck on there. Listen to all this play in this thing. I feel like that water pump was trash, so I'm very happy we have a new one. But now, check it out. There's our pulley, came right off. I assume the pulley is in pretty good shape, but this water pump, not in good shape. Uh, we gotta grab, it looks like uh, some tins, and the water pump should come right out. Then we have to pull off this lifting bracket for the engine. Uh, that's actually one of the brackets that kind of holds on the thermostat housing. And uh, this temp sensor needs to come off of there as well. So push in, lift up, done and done. Let's get all this out of the way. And uh, now that the wires are moved, we'll just get all the parts out of the way. So we've got three tins right here. And then uh, of course this is an 11 and this is a 13. So you need a lot of sockets to get the thermostat housing off. Uh, a lot of fun, but I get in here, man, these are all like perfectly torqued, factory torque on this stuff. All right, there's our bottom one. Now we just keep switching sockets pretty much nonstop here. So we need an 11 at the top. Get that out of there. That's the nut. And now there's one more bolt down low, which should pretty much get this off. We'll just leave that whole nut in the socket. Make life easy when it goes back together here. This is the last one. As you can see, that loosens up. And when it's all the way out, we should be able to get it out of the way. So let us get the thermostat right out of there. Probably make a big mess with the coolant, but the floor is already a mess. So. Hey, no coolant. All right, there's our th old thermostat housing. Honestly, it's probably fine. Is it original? Looks like it's been changed. I don't see a BMW logo on there. Oh, just kidding. An original. All this original stuff's getting swapped out. Man, hopefully nobody has to replace any of this stuff again for another you know, quarter million miles. That would be ideal. Now that all four are out, we'll just uh, put two of these bolts in there and we'll walk the water pump right off. It should pop out pretty easily. This is super nice when they have the bolts to extract them. Take a look right there at the top. You can see the gap opening up as I tighten this down. It just push itself right off there. We'll switch to the other side, keep going, and it should pop right out. Uh oh! There's the rest of the coolant. Knew that was coming. All of this goodness is ready to go on the X5 new thermostat housing. Of course, temp sensor has the thermostat in it already, water pump and uh, I mean, drop right on and a new pulley. I didn't even know I had a new pulley. All we have to do now is slide the old water pump out of here. Just like so. I already made a huge mess on the floor, so 
no going back from that. Uh, get these bolts out that I used to pull it. A factory water pump too, and BMW logo on there. Man, well, I will say, look at the shaft play on this. Glad we're replacing that. So we've got the Milwaukee die grinder with the 3M roll lock disc, like usual. This is my solution for getting old gasket material off and corrosion off aluminum, stuff like that. So basically we'll just hop in here with this thing, spin it up, and we should be able to take, if you look at that, just clean right up. Couple seconds of work, the best way to remove old gasket material. It's nice because it doesn't end up taking any metal off really, just what you need. Actually a bit of an upgrade, the new water pump has a metal uh, impeller instead of the old one that's plastic from the factory. So we've got the O-ring lubed up, we're ready to install our new water pump, finally. We're gonna be done with the fight that was the cooling system on this car. Water pump's bolted back on, almost no torque on those bolts, just be gentle with them. Obviously, the nuts are just tens. So, now we'll pop this cap off of here. Might have to work it around in a circle just to get the cap off. Okay. Now we're ready for the pulley and we're ready for the thermostat. So we'll start with the thermostat for accessibility and move on to the pulley. So this obviously, has a O-ring seal right around the front. Very easy to line it up. Just make sure you get that bracket in front of it. And I think we're gonna go get a new belt because this belt isn't pretty. <laughs> There's actually chunks missing. So we are gonna have to pull the AC belt off and go grab a new one. But luckily the belts are super easy to get on and off here. And uh, we got a lot of antifreeze on this one anyway. So keep it from squeaking. New everything. Hopefully they got a gates belt for that BMW. Should wrap this thing up. Hey. What's up? What you asking for today? Accessory belt, 2003 BMW X5. All right, thanks Gavin. You're welcome. Got the belt and we got the air filter for the F250. All right, you too, later. Things are gonna move fast now. So I've got the tensioner off for the AC belt. AC belt off old serpentine belt that's all cracked and uh, gross, covered with the slime. Chuck that over there. Here's our new one. Chuck that over there. It's nice being able to throw things in here. I can pick it all up later. Um, let's see if we can get this belt sorted out. It has a mind of its own. There we go. Okay, so we can put that back on the crank pulley and we'll just kind of set it aside for now. That way we can put the AC belt back on. Make sure the text faces the right direction because I like to do really dumb things like that. And uh, there we go, AC belts back on. You need a six mil for the tensioner, six millimeter for the tensioner. I'm gonna put those 10 millimeter bolts back in the uh, pulley for the water pump and we can plug this connector in for the temp sensor. Yep, make sure it's not gonna come off. I think it clicked. Nice, okay, we're good there. Ready to throw some hoses back on that. Put this on, put the serpentine belt back on. Alternator didn't make any noise, but when the engine's running, it doesn't make any noise, but those bearings are starting to sound a little suspect. That'd be a future maintenance item. Right. Over here, we have our cooling system Lego set. Let's get our new radiator out of here. Oh yeah, that is new. Very nice. Somehow some of our speaker wire for the speakers in here wound up inside there. We'll set this over here by this other one. We need all of these different things that have to be added on. So. We've got this whole new tray, and we've got this thing that slides into the tray there. New clips and all new screws to rebuild this whole system. Cut these straps off of here. Oh, that was an interesting sound. <laughs> all right. So here's our like sidecar for this radiator. Let's us install a lot of these parts here. This has very clear where that goes. In this bag, it appears we have the little outlet that slides in there. Oop. This is just a coolant elbow because there's so many things in the automatic like trans cooler, oil cooler, all that fun stuff. So this slides in here and locks in permanently, looks like. Yep, I think that's where that goes exactly. Cool. Over here we have the screws that hold this in and plastic rivets that go in the bottom and likely the top. Over here we've got the clamp that goes in here. It's really just a little hook setup that lets you quick, quick attach these. So that'll go right here. Okay, there we go. So if it's out, should release just like that. It's in, locked in. 
just push a coupler in there or we'll leave it released for now. So we've got the coolant and or windshield washer sensor, which is pretty funny. This can be either. This goes in the overflow tank, locks in like this. Huh. Very simple. Hope there's an O-ring in there or something. That should be sealed. Uh, there's a thermostat right here. We've got another coolant temp sensor right here. BMW and its sensors. That's why there's so many codes because it's actually very well managed. I love BMWs for doing this. But uh, okay, this goes in here one of these directions. Ah, oh, look at that, it's keyed. And it has an O-ring on it. Okay, so our coolant temp sensor is locked in. Make sure it's locked in here. You don't want to find out the hard way when this starts leaking. All right, there's one hose, new radiator cap. Making it through here. And uh, I just have to go figure out where that thermostat goes again. We found out where this other thermostat goes. Just drops in there and the hose holds it on. Pretty simple. The sidecar or whatever they call the Stuick piece, montage plata, the montage plate here. Basically because it's a bunch of nonsense on some molded plastic. It does have new O-rings in it, so this is ready to just install. Just kind of line it up, push it on here, and make sure all the screw holes are gonna line up where they belong. Turns out you gotta hook the front. So there's that. Much better. Okay, that is attached. You need a T25, so you can put this all together here. There's two screws you gotta install, and they're basically just plastic self tappers and uh, can a plastic rivet goes down here in the bottom. Now this plastic rivet might be incredibly hard to get in here because it doesn't exactly line up and I'm gonna go ahead and try before we tighten the screws so that we've got a chance at it. Our plastic rivet is installed. Now we can put all the screws in and tighten everything down. And this is ready to go back in the vehicle. Plastic is riveted the radiator cap on here and we gotta call this for the day so you guys can watch this tonight. Uh, the rest of this I'll get wrapped up tomorrow. We got a ton done today that was basically the whole cooling system. If it wouldn't have been fighting us for so long it would have been done already. So it was a it was a hard one battle today just getting that fan off it took long enough and a lot of you guys that watched the live stream wanted an update on the family as I uh, mentioned in the live stream basically Everybody got COVID and uh, everybody was recovering, but my dad was in ICU when we did the live stream. Uh, he was moved to a regular room, back to intermediate care, back to a regular room. And I think right now he's kind of doing all right and in a regular room. So that is the update on Watch Senior Go. And uh, nothing I can do, but keep right on working. It's not like you can go to the hospitals. So tomorrow we wrap this up. It's going to be nice. And uh, then We'll figure out what we're gonna do. I guess we're gonna run another giveaway. We still haven't heard from Daniel Cross about the X5. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. X5 progression, it's just about there. One more day and probably got the whole thing done. So don't forget to head on over to shop, watchjargo.com where you can get cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. So Greg and I have been out here. He's still up on the scissor lift, working away for a long time. If you take a look, all of the pipe is in for the first two bays and four of the lights are up there. So he just finished making up that outlet right there and putting that light up. We're gonna plug these in for the first time. You guys are gonna get to watch the shop light up and it's only four of the lights. There's 40 of these going in. So you guys ready for this? Here we go. Boom! <laughs> four of those is enough to see pretty well across the entire shop. I cannot wait for 40. They're at hundred percent right now they're gonna need turned down a lot, but it's gonna be beautiful and even. And I'm here with Michael, and last night we got 14 of these lights running. Now, it's not exactly video worthy. This is an update on the lights that's coming up because we've got 40 of them. That's four with a zero right there. And of course, nine more over there on the other side. And uh, today's video is about the X5. But first, Michael drove all the way down from Arkansas this morning with the Narcs cart. So check it out. This is a Vic, isn't it? It's, yep. Okay, I didn't remember if it was, it's some Panther platform car, but it's a Vic. Yep. And uh, of course, this is something you really never see because the typical carts are Corvettes, Miatas, or just buy an Ariel Atom if you have a lot of money like I don't. 
And uh, this is this is how you do it yourself, real easy in a Crown Vic, and get a V8. Let's take a quick walk around this beast. Basically, you told me these are tires from the Ram. They look like they're about from a Suburban. So yeah, yeah, yep. Uh, close yeah. enough. Huge tires, so it gives you like a safari look. It's really nice. Yep. Uh, of course, you built all the cage and everything. Yep. And we've got lots of LEDs here, so mm -hmm. I guess you're pretty much driving home in the dark, and that'll work out really well. Yeah, cheap Amazon, and the light bar is tied to the bright lights. Okay, so cool, cool. Set there. Yep, that works yep. out. Uh, all donated stuff, wheels, tires. Uh, yep tire sponsor which is dangerous for him we just killed some tires the other day <laughs> he just gives you used tires yeah that's a tire sponsor <laughs> <laughs> yep yep uh donated seats front and back the yep. kids love it welded diff welded diff cool yep. 430s trunk yep. is wide open here and you got the utv system going on and then of course you did race week in this with old cletus right yep yep and uh you had to add the shut off switch there the kill switch for the <laughs> battery and uh, man, that's a nice inertia switch is just sitting right there. That's super funny. Yeah. Hope you don't smack anything with it. If anybody would really know about these cars, you, I mean, they would just reach up and turn that thing off and I would never- Oh yeah, you'd never find it. You'd be troubleshooting for days. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> What's uh? Why'd you move the windshield washer fluid back here? Is that? Uh, rear tire sprayer. Ah. Donuts, burnouts, you know. Smart, I like yeah. it a lot, yeah. I like it. And then, uh, of course, the, yeah, so the UTV system with Bluetooth and everything. And then you built a cab so you could drive to Kansas in the cold this morning. Yeah, I had to come see the warehouse. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So first, I'm excited you're here. What a drive. And then you're going to drive back tonight? Yeah. Ridiculous. That's just too much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this thing's really cool. Taped in all these doors that are made out of like a foam board and uh, yeah, wooden roof. Cool. Well, let's get this thing outside and see what it can do. I uh, will it drift? Yeah, kind of. Cool. We're I'll, gonna try it. Let me try it. Perfect. <laughs> Michael and I also did some rallies together. The express rally ones that I usually do a few times a year. It's a small rally that's just a lot of fun with like pretty normal cars. Yeah. So you know you don't have to bring supercars or anything like that. You can bring fun stuff like this. Also, I just noticed the air suspension switch there. Did you? What did you do about the air suspension? <laughs> it's coils on the back. It okay. Had been converted. Okay. Yeah. It are already done when you yeah. bought it. Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well. Let's drive it. These pants are not like the pants I had on earlier. <laughs> Woo oh yeah. They got raw power, dude. Man, you are at 99,600 miles. <laughs> yeah. This is a new car. Where'd you get one with such low miles? Hey, it had never been smoked in either. That's crazy. had approval to go ham. <laughs> oh man, that is way too fun. <laughs> what a monster. It's so easy to send it sideways too. It's like Kind of a perfect combo. You just like touch it, get a little bit of wheel spin, and yep. it just goes. It just goes around. It whips. All right, I had a lot of fun. Michael's turn. <laughs> Man, that thing's good at that. This thing is so much fun. It is super fun. Yeah. Everybody should have a car they don't care about at one point in their life. Yeah, just to have fun and enjoy life. Yep. A lot of fun with Michael today. Huge progress on the lights. Really big stuff coming on Thursday and Monday. This thing, it finally feels like we're making some progress. The biggest stretch of time with the building was uh, trying to get the building back to stock. We've still got more cutting to do, but we're really close.